Hi, this is Rachel with Rachel's Reviews, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about romantic comedies. And I have recently read a number of articles that talk about the fact that the romantic comedy is dead. And uh, here are a few you see uh, on this graphic. Uh, this is from The Hollywood Reporter, The Variety, um, on NPR, uh, a lot of different sources saying the romantic comedy is dead, nobody's making them, nobody wants to see them. These articles make me a little sad because I honestly hope that that's not true because I think that the romantic comedy is one of the best genres of movies and it's one that I certainly enjoy the most. And so I wanted to make a little bit of a defense of the romantic comedy and explain why some don't work and why some do work. And so that hopefully Maybe we can rehabilitate the romantic comedy. In fact, there are so many of these articles that one article I found actually says that it is a genre of the romantic comedy is creating the obituary for the romantic comedy, which I thought was kind of a funny, funny article. They really, really are kind of under attack. And last year, only two romantic comedies got released and neither of them got any publicity and neither of them were i'm told were very good it was the big wedding and baggage claim uh, they were the only ones that i i was aware of that i heard about and i don't know about this year there's the one with uh amy poehler and paul rudd but uh, i haven't had the chance to see that one and then there was one with mark ruffalo and Keira knightley that looked pretty good and so i definitely want to see that but the the romantic comedy, I feel like you can take it all the way back to Pride and Prejudice and Taming of the Shrew. I think almost all of these storylines, in the end, kind of go back to those two plot lines. Now, in Pride and Prejudice, we have two characters that are, of course, right for each other, but don't know it. And one of the reasons why Pride and Prejudice works and has worked for so long is that it gives us enough time away from those characters where we really get to know them and love them and see how admired they are by their friends, their family, uh, that we want them to get together because we, we like them so much. And then with Taming of the Shrew, the, the comedy is so over the top and so outlandish that it is funny. And so we don't get quite that same sense of, of a kinship to either Petruchio or Catherine, but we do get a little bit, enough to kind of root for them, but it's so, like I said, so over the top and so slapsticky that it's funny, and uh, it it's something that is hard to do, and of course somebody like Shakespeare could do it. And uh, so, you know, those, I think, are, or you see a lot of those two, two works of fiction and theater, in most romantic comedies that are made today. I always hear that people say that the romantic comedy is unrealistic, that nobody is really like that. And I actually disagree. I feel like they're actually, in a weird way, very realistic. Because when you're talking to two people that you genuinely love, and you hear their story about how they got together, most of the time it's pretty corny, and it's pretty cheesy. And it, it's, you know, it's just something about love and romance that is kind of cornball. It's kind of silly. And so I think actually most people's stories are kind of like a romantic comedy. It's certainly, I think, more realistic than a lot of other genres. I mean, how often do we have giant explosions and chases and, you know, how how realistic is the action genre how realistic is the horror genre but everyone pretty much uh, or certainly the strong majority of the population has romantic experiences in their lives everyone pretty much can relate to that and so I actually think in a funny way that the romantic comedy is the most realistic aside from a documentary of any or at least has the potential to be realistic uh, that of any genre and when it comes down to it it's all about good writing any genre is not good if the writing is not good 
And uh, you, know, you can have great actors, you can have great cinematography, you can have great ideas, but if the writing isn't good, then it is, it's just not going to be a good movie. Let's talk about what so many of these movies get wrong. One of the things that you see a lot of times in the bad romantic comedies are some type of, of ridiculous wager. And that is completely unrealistic. What, or some kind of some kind of gimmick, like going to Ireland to propose, or, or getting married in Las Vegas and having to live together for a year, or having to write uh, a novel in uh, 30 days because these over-the-top gangsters are going to come and come and get you, or having a bet of whether you, you can take the, the ugliest girl in school to the prom, these kind of bets, these kinds of stupid gimmicks, whether it's a ghost or whether it's just, that's when it becomes unrealistic, when it's just stupid. And there are so many of those, and I think that those really created a problem for the romantic comedy, because if, if you don't even have a semblance of realism, in your story, then it's not going to be a good movie. It's very difficult to do, let's put it that way. Maybe a great writer could make a gimmick uh, romantic comedy work. Uh, like my Big Fat Greek Wedding is a little bit of a gimmick of a comedy, but it, the writing is really good and there's enough likable people. And it is, I think, fairly realistic the way that they meet and the way that they you know, the characters are kind of over the top, like in Taming of the Shrew. They're, uh, they're not so much so that it feels, it distracts you from enjoying the movie. It just makes you laugh. The other big flaw that these romantic comedies almost always have is they create characters that are so unlikable. They're so shrill. They're so mean. They're so uh, petty and unlikable that you don't want them to fall in love. You don't, you know, they take the idea of the Pride and Prejudice and they forget that those characters have lots of scenes with lots of people where they were shown to be very, very likable and very, very sincere. And so you knew that if they just met and that if they understood each other, if they could speak the same language to each other, that they would really like each other. Uh, and there was, there was no doubt of that. And so when you have these uh, these movies where the characters are just fighting and fighting and fighting and there isn't enough humor, like in Taming of the Shrew, to overcome that, if the writing isn't good enough to overcome that, then it's just death. It's just, you don't care. You want to get out of this movie as soon as you can because you hate these people. And so, you know, those are, are some of the, the huge... I mean, you have a movie like Clueless that kind of has sort of unlikable characters, but they have a warmth to them that overcomes their superficiality, and it makes the story really funny, and the writing is really good. So, you know, it just, that that's the two biggest things, like when you have the gimmick romantic comedy, and when you have them just being so hateful, and there's no avenue to show any kind of warmth or, or, or love, then it is just death to that movie. Now, when they get it right, you know, there can be a gimmick to the plot a little bit. You can have like a movie like Fever Pitch, which I really liked, that definitely has a gimmick of the of the Jimmy Fallon character's addiction to the Red Sox. And but it, it's kind of interesting because Drew Barrymore sort of has she's sort of a workaholic and you know, so they both have their sort of their preoccupations and we can kind of relate to that. And the writing is pretty good, and it feels like, okay, people really talk about the things like this. I can, I know people that are that hardcore into sports or into work, and so I, I can go with it. And, you know, you, I always say that when you, when you write something, that you want to write it just a hair up from what is sort of normal life. You want to do a little bit more. If you do a lot more, then you have to be really good. Uh, writer or have a really special performer that can pull off that kind of performance. If not, it's just death. And uh, But you can get a little bit over the top. And, you know, you have a movie like Sweet Home Alabama that could have been really dumb, but it actually, I think, works pretty well because you have her choosing between two pretty likable guys. 
pretty nice guys. The parts of the movie that don't work as well are kind of the slapsticky elements with the being, you know, the Alabama jokes. Those don't work as well. But as far as the the, the romantic comedy elements between the two guys and the, and and Reese, uh, it it does work because you you feel like you want these characters to to do well. And and the Patrick Dempsey character isn't just some throwaway jerk uh, fiance it, like in so many bad romantic comedies. Uh, and you have a movie like Naughty Hill, which is great, I think, in creating two characters that are really believable. It feels like, okay, I think there could be two people like this. They could meet. They could... It's definitely a meet cute, but I don't think it's it's out of the realm of possibility. And especially what I love in that movie is when him and she, he takes Anna to meet his friends and they have they go to dinner and they talk and that conversation feels so authentic to the way people really talk. I think another movie that's uh, even though it has lots of gimmicks is 500 Days of Summer because it as far as the dialogue between the characters I feel like it it is pretty authentic and it works and you you uh, and it's so consistent within the style of the movie that they're making that it, that it works. Like Love Actually, which is not all the storylines work equally well, but I feel like it's done in a likable way with uh, engaging performers, uh, and it has good music. It has uh, you know kind of it's Christmas, so I think you can you can accept a little bit more schmaltz at Christmas. I mean, my, my all-time favorite is uh, When Harry Met Sally and, well, All Nor Ephron. I love You've Got Mail. Um, and I think those movies are both great because they are about more than just romance. Where, you know, When Harry Met Sally asks the question, can men and women be friends? So it's actually a movie about friendship, which is something anyone can relate to and it's interesting. And Nora Ephron is so good at writing dialogue. She has a, a ton of funny jokes about uh, movies and you know life and it's just a, a, when Harry Met Sally is a very funny movie uh, and uh, you've got mail has a lot to say about work and how you are you are defined by your work and it's you know, it's definitely one of my one of my favorite movies I love it it has a lot to say about New York and uh, you know even something silly like Starbucks or uh, but you know you take a movie like Failure to Launch which was so stupid, and it was so, you know, it, they twisted this this plot of this supposed uh, woman who goes in and rescues these adolescent boys and and and, uh, and gets them to move out of the house. I mean, that is such a strained premise. And then they have two pretty unlikable actors that you don't like, you don't care about, you don't want them to get together. It's completely ridiculous when they do get together. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't work. And so, you know, you take, I take a, you know, story about uh, two uh, business owners that have some tension and conflict and, you know, then they do end up falling in love. I take that any day over something that is so, so contrived of, like I said, uh, a fan, you know, two parents hiring a, uh, a failure to launch expert. I mean, that's just so ridiculous. And anyway, there are lots of examples I could use. Uh, you know, one of the things that makes Bridget Jones work is because you have uh, likable characters. They're funny. Uh, the script is very uh, funny as far as commentary about weight loss and and uh, work and fashion and uh, you know dealing with your parents and all that stuff. Like that is funny. And so I, I think there, it would be a shame if the romantic comedy is truly dead. I think that's really a shame because I think it's one of those genres that makes you feel good. It can make you really happy and it can also be something that I genuinely think pretty much anyone can relate to. And they can think about their love and their lives and uh, their various attachments over the years, what they learned from them. And... Uh, so I, I don't think that 
it, it would be a good thing if there weren't any more romantic comedies. And I know that that movies are made nowadays for basically the 13 to 17 year old male demographic and everything has to be available in 3D and everything else. But we've also seen with the Hallmark Channel and there have been actually releasing some really good romantic comedies. And so obviously you can make a pretty good romantic comedy with a pretty appealing cast on a very, very small budget. And so I hope that people won't give up on the genre and I, I hope they'll get some good writers really really try to find that balance of characters that we like uh, and romance that we believe in and uh, you know something that will make us laugh because I, I just love I love the genre it's my favorite and uh, so let me know what you think do you think it's dead do you hate the genre which are, what are some that you do like what are some that you hate uh, and uh, and let's talk about it below. That would be great. And uh, I try to put up videos. Sometimes most of my videos are about um, uh, subscription boxes, but occasionally I do a movie video. Uh, I also have started a new blog where I am blogging about all 54 Disney animated classics, and I'm having a blast. It's really fun. I'll put the link down below. Please subscribe to that. Check it out. I think you'll really like it. And uh, again, put your comments about romantic comedies. Let me know. And uh, thanks so much. I'll talk to you later. Bye.